Hey guys, what up with it? That's my uh, that's my Borat impression. That's the best I can do. Um, so I got a uh, interesting comment tonight, and actually I, I apologize, man. This dude emailed me like three weeks ago, and I just now got back to him. I, there's like I I don't get like inundated with mail, but honestly, like when I feel like it needs a response, like I, I can't I can't respond right away. So I try to respond. I apologize. I've said it before. I can only do what I can do though. Um, so one of the things he was talking about is, uh, is, is he's been learning JavaScript and CSS and HTML, and he's basically at a crossroads where he wants to know whether or not he needs to go ahead and jump down a you know web server side language like PHP uh, or Python and Django. Um, he's leaning towards PHP because of WordPress and and um, I think I mentioned Laravel, but uh, he was asking me you know whether or not PHP would be a good decision for him now it, it seems like his intention and he has no college um, I think he's taken a few courses maybe unrelated at a community college and plans to go to a coding boot camp uh, and that being said definitely check out uh, my coding sponsor which is Dev Mountain coding boot camp um, they offer all kinds of courses and uh, modern JavaScript so you can learn about node.js and um, and jQuery and things like that and apparently they have a very good track record so I've actually read up on them quite a bit even though they are my uh, uh, my sponsor they they, uh, they are definitely one of the larger companies that, that seem to be coming up with uh, these coding boot camps so check them out if you're interested I think they have courses like actual on-site courses out of Provo Utah and also um, Dallas Texas so that being said this guy it was like he, he wants to know, should he jump down PHP and start going down that road right away? Now, one of the things that I did constantly when I was first getting started, my first scripting language was Perl, and I struggled with Perl, and I always tried to, to run before I could learn how to crawl. And I would get frustrated, and I'd start doubting whether or not I could be a programmer. I started doubting whether or not Perl was the right language for me. Ultimately, those doubts ended up you know, manifesting themselves to the point where I eventually tried out Python, and I never really looked back. I mean, f because when I came from Perl and started learning Python, I just like I, I saw the light of the day. The, the Python had a better community. Um, they were definitely more helpful. There was only like one Pythonic way of doing things, where Perl, there were so many different ways. Um, but the thing is, is that the struggles were real, though. The, the struggles of not understanding um, some of the basics of the language after I had been messing with it for three and four months, you know, because I never properly learned it. I was trying to jump into things. I was trying to do too many things too fast. I was building website templates into a lot of, um, you know, looking in the jQuery plugins and JavaScript. And back then it was like, do I learn jQuery or JavaScript? And, um, you know, there was still this, you know, huge learning curve when it came to CSS and things like that. Um, uh, and even software applications like Photoshop and, um, my cat is attacking me. Uh, Photoshop and things like that. And it's just like there was so much that, that I had on my plate, not to mention being uh, married, two kids, long commute, full-time job, um, even going to school here and there. Just, you know, uh, so I would come home. I'd be tired, man. I mean, I'm trying to deal with all this stuff. And um, it was a lot. It was a lot to swallow. So my suggestion is that based on your email, um, and I should finish what he was talking about. He was talking about that he wants to go around the companies and basically charge like $250 or so to build websites for them. And he's worrying about like PHP and, uh, and, and databases and, and full stack frameworks that, that, that PHP has and WordPress and stuff. And it was just like, number one, I told him, I was like, look, you're not charging enough. So $250 is not enough. Even if it takes you, uh, you know, one day to do, I don't think the $250 is enough. You're selling yourself short. Now that said, if you were going to be charging $250 and you're making a website for somebody, then I would say that you don't need a server-side language at all. I actually created this website, and I didn't even realize that it's up after all this time, is that I created this website for this uh, this small company that literally is a very, very tiny company in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And um, I made this, this simple website. It's so all I needed to do was get a free image, a bootstrap theme, and basically plug in some basic data. So this website actually looks much more professional than some of their competitors that do the same thing. And I ended up, um, I, I did it for free because it was a buddy, but I would have charged $250 for that easily. And it only takes me an hour or two um, to actually do it. And if you want them to actually, if you want to actually uh, host a website for them and put it on your server, you can even get a shared, um, not even a shared, but like a virtual private server for Linode and I could literally host probably 50 websites just like that um, 
and charge somebody probably 20 bucks a month or something like that just to, to host it. I mean, you're not breaking their balls. Um, there's still going to be there would there would be huge amounts of headaches for them to have to figure this out on their own, their own. So my point is though is that none of that even required a server side stack. It required some you know setting up a virtual private host. Um, you could probably go with like a shared host maybe that does a lot of that that initial setup for you, but you're not going to have as much flexibility uh, or resources for such a cheap price as you would with something like Linode uh, or the Digital Ocean. But um, there's no reason why you need to jump down PHP and try to get somebody to use a WordPress site and all this other, all this other stuff. Um, I would avoid that as much as possible. If they want databases and they want authentication, you need to start getting into the thousands, um, you know, five, ten thousand dollars for a site. Um, I mean, an e-commerce site or something. Like that. I mean, if you're if you're doing a lot of freeform stuff, then you know definitely you, you need to raise that price significantly. But if it's only going to take you a couple hours, uh, you could do a site that's literally as simple as using a free Bootstrap theme and, and plugging in some data here and there. Uh, no email servers, no no mail authentication, no database, none of that stuff. Even if you needed some data, you could even have a JSON file that is just literally sitting in the, you could have a JSON object that's sitting in your HTML file that can literally handle a database for plenty of restaurants and things like that out there that literally don't need a major database or anything like that. So I think there's plenty of opportunity out there for people that are eager, especially some of these indie developers to get out there and start um, you know, putting their ear to the uh, or axe to the grindstone or whatever that shit is. And um, the point is, like, if I were going to do that and I needed the work, there's no reason why you can't even go into, um, you know, a section of town where you can literally start going into stores and being like, look, this is what I do. This is what I can do for you. I'll, you know, $250, I'll get your website up for a $20 a month reoccurring fee. Uh, you could even buy the domain for them and all that stuff, you know, get a domain name that they, um, are happy with basically you can make a business model I think doing something like this and even building a name for yourself as a company but one of the things I will tell you is that um, when I first started getting into web development there was a a, a horticultural like hydroponics type company in Washington DC I'm not gonna name them because this uh, this business connection was through a third party and I never even really communicated with these people I got fucked out of this deal so hard though um, I worked for several weeks on a website for these people, and all all these jackasses gave me was like an image of what they wanted it to look like. So I didn't even have the proper placeholder for data and stuff like that. So I basically created this entire site from one image, and it was all working. It all worked great. It worked on multiple browsers, and then I didn't get paid. And long story short, these assholes were were bickering and arguing between themselves about you know who authorized this this uh, this actual design. It wasn't what they wanted. Blah blah blah. And then they didn't even really understand who was even building the product for them. So the, the thing is, I got screwed out of twenty five hundred dollars. I, I should have asked for half of it up front. You always want to get like half of it up front, at least 30, 30, 33 percent of it up front. That way somebody can't completely dick you over. It's enough money to where they want you to finish the deal and you want to finish the deal to get the rest of that money. But, um, you know, that situation sucked. And uh I never want to go down. In fact, to this day, like people have asked me to build websites for them and I'm just like, no, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, but if I needed the work and I needed the opportunity, I would do it. Uh, and I've done a few sites. Like I did that site that I just showed you. I did a, a, a landscaping site for another buddy of mine in Maryland. And uh, even that is just a hassle. The other day he called me and said the Node.js site was down. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, you, people need to pay me. You know what I mean? You need to pay me at least. 50 to 75 dollars an hour you know what i should be asking for 75 to 150 an hour I, I don't even know what i should be asking for but the point is, is i shouldn't be working for free um uh, but the the thing is is like at least i know them and if they try to get me to do something i don't want to do i'm going to tell them i don't want to do it i'm not going to do it so uh, when you're dealing with customers and money and contracts and stuff like that you can't really do that you have to you have to be professional you have to try to work out these uh, uh, these uh, these agreements um you know, the customer is generally always right. So you want to make sure that uh, you don't, you know, act like a dick because a lot of your business is probably going to be word of mouth. Uh, and that's another thing, too. I worked with an architect one time, a guy that loves to talk about technology and, and, and what a great, great guy Steve Jobs was and all this stuff, uh, but doesn't know dick about technology. And he had me, um, 
he gave me three templates and 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 he was like you know this first one that's what i really want it was like this darker theme and all this shit i made this beautiful website and 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 then the very same format using bootstrap uh using a template modified it um you did some maybe a little decent photoshop work for the logo all stuff this shit looked immaculate and then he was like trying to backtrack and like talk about you wanted the lighter theme and all this stuff and I, I don't know, man. I, I just I couldn't help but to get pissed off in that situation. Like, that's the kind of bullshit you deal with with a customer, and that you can't basically just walk away and be like, ah, fuck it. You can, but you're gonna hurt your business um, relationship. At least with a friend or a buddy, you can be like, dude, you're you're fucking me here. You know what I mean? Like, I just I did this because you fucking wanted me to, not because I just wanted to make it. You know what I mean? Like. I, th- those are the type of deals that I, I don't ever really like to get involved in because I don't need to. If I ever needed to, I would actually do that. In fact, I would go to my old town and start going to all these businesses and being like, look, I can do this for you. Um, and I could even appeal to the internet and things like that and try to say, hey, I can do this for you. There's plenty of companies that are doing that, but you can undercut them. Um, you could undercut them on price and stuff like that as a single man operation. There's no reason. Um, and another reason, another way that you undercut people is to not get caught up in the bullshit of what is the here and now and what is the popular tool. Get the job done. And I just did a video yesterday um, at the time that this is recording, which is going to be released a couple of days from now. But basically, I did a, a video yesterday where I talk about working is good enough. And for the most part in the business world, working is good enough. Like get it working. You don't need Redux and React and all this stuff in order to display a little bit of data on a website uh, for a business. You know, you could charge them. Uh, you know, here's your here's your data. Here's what it is. You want to go ahead and update your your um, your menu or whatever? Yeah, I can do that for you. No problem. It's gonna be twenty five dollars an hour and a fifty dollar you know fee or something like that. Or if it's it's fifty dollar fee and then if it takes more than two hours, then it's gonna be you know an extra twenty five fifty bucks or whatever per hour on top of that um, to to do that kind of thing and. Um, if you have this business trustful relationship, I mean, you get a lot of those contracts. I mean, you could easily be making some, some decent bank, I think, in the United States at least, uh, doing stuff like that. Uh, and I know plenty of people that have actually gotten by that way. This horticulture site in D.C. though, man, they they fucked me real bad, and um, and that was like that was twenty five hundred dollars and like weeks worth of work. So that's another thing too. If uh, if you're only charging two hundred fifty dollars and it's only taking you a couple hours. It's much easier to lend the kind of credit to, to lend the business trust to say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'll make money. And uh, my cat is driving me nuts. Um, so that, that's, that's what I would do, man. Um, don't, don't worry about PHP or WordPress or Laravel or any of that stuff if you're only charging $250 for a site. Get out there, start worrying about marketing, start building your Pinterest channel, your Facebook, your your Instagram, your YouTube, you do all that stuff for your business, start marketing your products, set up your LinkedIn, make sure you make yourself look professional, set up a Stripe account so you can start getting credit card payments. You set up a PayPal account because PayPal, even though they got uh, large fees, I mean, it's very easy to send somebody a PayPal invoice and get paid. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that you, you should be focusing on before you start um, involving yourself in so much of that other stuff for a simple $250 website. And, uh, and that's really just my thoughts, man. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you subscribe. Also, once again, check out my uh, sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, for any sort of bootcamp needs that you guys might have out there. Take care. Bye.